No, but it, actually, it's kind of funny though. Like this, this actually should kind of go in because I was like obsessed with tornadoes when I was little. Like, do you? Remember, <laughs> I think I was. It was a uh, second grade or in a uh, third grade, maybe. There was like a tornado warning here. Do you remember that? So that was, it was, back it was during in, the, the magic finals. Yes. Do you remember that? Yeah. So the. I kind of do, but one that sticks out to me was back in 2010 in Almsville. Mm-hmm. There was one that ripped through Almsville, and my dad works in Staten. Yeah, and he and I remember him telling me because he works on a farm, and you know it was December, so there's not really a ton to do. And he was telling me how the lights were flickering, and it was like golf Wait, balls in December. Pale. Yeah, it was. It was like a week or two before Christmas. Wait. <laughs> So Oregon's kind of weird. If Oregon's going to get tornadoes, they're either going to be in the summer or they're going to be in the winter. That's odd. Yeah, you know, you only think about tornadoes springtime. Yeah. So, um, yeah, no, Oregon. I think has a possibility by the time we're you know in our forties and or fifties that we can see quite a few tornadoes. I think with the way that the climate change is happening, um, yeah. and you know, overall the valley's pretty flat. You know, except for, you know, some hills or whatever else. So I think if things go the way they're going and they don't change, I think Oregon could see some more tornadoes by the time we're a little bit older. What kind of got you into weather? Is it just like interesting to you or what? So I always watched as a kid storm chasers. Yes, yeah, same. I literally I watched storm chasers <laughs> all the time. <laughs> that's a, that's actually so- hilarious. I was obsessed with tornadoes and hurricanes. <laughs> That's awesome. And so, honestly, just watching them and, yeah. you know, as I got older, I still liked them. I was like, that'd be kind of cool to, you know, talk about them on TV or whatever. Yeah. And so. So, um, would you ever be down to, like, chase storms, though? Is that kind of, like, out of your <laughs> realm? I mean, like, I want to do kinda. it once or twice. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, I want to do it once or twice to see what it's like. But if I can... I prefer to be in a studio saying, Hey, there's a tornado coming. You, know, you should get underground. Yeah. But you know, if I have to go out there and chase them, I mean, I will, but it's yeah. not my number <laughs> one priority. So yeah. would, um, would you, would you kind of want to, because like, if you were, if you're into that stuff, are you kind of just like, I want to chill in Portland, kind of do that thing. Or are you like, cause if you're really into like extreme weather like that, I feel like uh-huh. you would have to maybe move somewhere else but at the same time oh, you're yeah, kind of right though like the climate is changing a lot and things are changing like weather is getting way more extreme so <laughs> even if you stay if even if you stayed put you might like be solid oh well, yeah i just i mean i don't really like oregon as a state it rains too much for me mm-hmm. and so i plan to move out into the midwest if i can um you'd be that'd be perfect <laughs> you'd get maybe when's prime tornado time in like Oklahoma. are we talking for here or in Oklahoma? Oklahoma, Oklahoma. that's that's definitely going to be you know your late Mar- oh, uh, oh wait what happened? Okay, there we go. All right, so that's definitely going to be like your late March, April, May. That like peak springtime, definitely. Okay, because yeah. you'll get a lot of cool air coming from Canada, and you'll get a lot of warm air coming from the Gulf of Mexico. Cool and warm air don't really like each other, and so. They'll clash, and then you know you all thunderstorms, and then if you get enough updraft, you'll start spinning. And right on, yeah. It's kind of weird because today my mom was like getting a weird feeling. She thinks that there might be a thunderstorm or something, just because like the weather, like it's been like really like hot. I guess I don't know. She was yeah. just like she felt it. Like she could be right on. I don't know, <laughs> but it, the weather well, has mean, been kind of weird. Yeah, and I mean we definitely had you know, quite a bit of warm spells and stuff like that. And today was humid. Like it reminded me of when I was down um, over in Virginia, <laughs> like just like clouds, but it was still hot. And, yeah. you know, there was a thunderstorm that was just South of junction city earlier. I got on my phone, Really, but yeah, I'd say overall the ingredients weren't there for like a big, big storm, but I can see where she's coming from, you know. I just think, honestly, I think Oregonians and people on the West Coast need to like have a basis of information on what to do because that's true. I would say a lot of them don't. <laughs> yeah, because nothing, nothing that extreme really tends to happen, and it's probably going to in the future, which is scary. 
Well, yeah, I mean, it's scary to think about, but if we just take the precautions that we need to take, there, our fears can be brought down so much. Right, but the scary thing is I get so out of your control, but at the yeah. same time, that should sometimes give you a little bit of peace of mind, knowing that, but it it's weird though, because it kind of is, like all the crazy <laughs> stuff that's happening is in our control, but it's not at the same yeah. time, it's weird. Well, yeah, and I mean, you can't really control the weather, like at all, like there's nothing no. you can do. Yeah, there's um, nothing. But if we, I mean, but like, people have to realize, like, if stuff gets destroyed or whatever, you know, that's, I mean, you, you can always get, you know, rebuild a new house. You can always get a new TV or whatever else. But, you know, as long as you're okay, I think at the end of the day, that's what really matters. I mean, it's it's definitely going to suck to lose your house or whatever. But as long as you're okay at the end of the day, I think that's all that matters. Yeah. Do you do you think that like the, are the current times we're in or whatever and like climate change and all that has kind of played a little bit of a role as to why you kind of want to get into weather or something like that? Yeah, I mean, it, I mean, it's definitely you know helping because I've always wanted to help people first. I've always put myself, or at least tried to put myself behind others, making sure other people are okay and stuff like that. I'm not, you know, I'm not doing, or I'm not going to be a weatherman for the money. I mean, right. you get paid a decent amount, but I just, I just, at the end of the day, want to make sure people are okay. Mm-hmm. And so that's, you know, because in the more technology advances, I think the more people will understand and the more people that we have understanding of what can happen and they know what to do, the less people will lose from a tornado so, right. or yeah. whatever. So, mm-hmm. yeah. So like, that's just such a cool thing that you, cause like, I don't like, there's not a lot of people that like I hear that want to be like a meteorologist or whatever, but that is pretty sick. Yeah. I mean, I've, you know, I've definitely heard that from people, you know, they're like, well, it's a little out of left field, but it, for me, it's always been something that I've wanted to do ever since I was a kid. Are like and all so, those like big 12 schools kind of like have programs like that or is Oklahoma just kind of like they have. Well, also, well, you know, I would say a good chunk of them do, mm-hmm. but Oklahoma, a, is you know just the best in the country especially for oh, severe for weather. that yeah yeah i mean it's hands down like a lot of the top meteorologists out there will either come from um oklahoma or somewhere down south and i've always kind of and i've got a lot of letters from mississippi state and if i can't go to oklahoma they would definitely be on the radar too because they're because from like east louisiana all the way to western georgia you have a second uh tornado alley called dixie alley and it's it's hardly ever talked about but they have just as many tornadoes as like the typical tornado alley that stretches from texas to nebraska wow it's just really the only difference is there's more trees like the south like except it's more flat but it's got just as many trees as here um but yeah they definitely have just as many tornadoes and some of them are a lot more destructive than the ones you'll see uh in the midwest what's the categories again it goes up to like eaf5 or so it's yeah so it starts at ef0 which is a lot of things that happen here if we're going to get a tornado here in oregon it's like an ef0 ef1 uh but you know ef it goes EF2, ef3 ef4 ef5 it's so rare to see an ef5 though like yeah less than 1% of tornadoes are EF5s. And so if you yeah. get an outbreak or whatever and you see like three or four, that's just incredible. Yeah. That, those things are massive because like that's what the storm teachers, that's what they would all be. And like they're literally, mm-hmm. you can see them. Like it just look, kind of just looks like a cloud that's like covering mm-hmm. the horizon. That's how big and wide. It's crazy. When I was in, I think South Dakota or something, we when we were there, um, like the lady we were with didn't want to freak uh-huh. us out or whatever, but there was, uh, there was a, like a tornado to the, it started hailing crazy. Like the weather is just, it's crazy how once the more East you go, like the mm-hmm. weather is drastically different. Oh yeah. It's crazy. But yeah. Did you have any like um, family members that went to Oklahoma or is that, did it just kind of your love for it kind of stem from meteorology or whatever? Well, I always like, okay. So, Storm chasers, you know, we all know Reed. Well, Reed, yeah. well, Reed is an OU graduate. Oh, okay. And so when I was looking at that, and I was just like looking at like backgrounds and where these people came from <clears throat> and what they did, mm-hmm. uh, Oklahoma was a consistent like you know 
like, hey, they're really good. And I read online, like, hey, they're really good. And plus, they see a lot of tornadoes. And so at the end of the day, I was like, that's just, that's, that just seems like the place. And when I took my visit there in October, I was just like, wow. <laughs> that's sick, dude. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just, you know, I'm hoping and praying that everything works out and I'll be there in t- two years. Uh, but, but, you know, anything can happen as we've learned this year. Nothing, you know, can be ruled out. So, you know, I definitely have backup plans like Mississippi State or LSU or, I mean, even Oregon State if I had to. But I'd like yeah. to go somewhere else for college if I could. That's awesome because I always saw you sporting around Oklahoma stuff, and I was like, "That's kind of random." You must have like family members there, but it's just—it's probably just an added bonus that they're hella good at sports for the most part. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, they're you know definitely you know a consistent college football playoff team, and mm-hmm. you know they got a pretty good basketball program and a decent baseball program, and yeah, it's just an added bonus. I mean, even if they were you know uh, Oregon State level in athletics, um, I still sport their stuff, Ooh. and it's not. You know, and it's Ooh. not a rip because Cal, you know, I'm a diehard beaver. It's just, yeah. you know, it's tough right now. But hey, things are on the up and up for that, you know, whole, you know, Oregon State Athletics. So, what do you look at? What what program are you looking most like forward? Who do you think is on the up the most? Football, 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 and it's not even a question. Yeah, so talent. I'd say the talent that Jonathan Smith is bringing in year after year, um, slowly getting- flies. It flies under the radar, and he's getting people that are recognizing the change that's going on, and he's getting people that fit the culture. He's not just necessarily going after the top talents, you know, in the country. Now, sure, if we get the number one player, great, but yeah, you know, he he's thinking it's out not always the about box. Oh well, yeah, because like Brandon Cooks was a three star recruit, right? You know, like <laughs> mm-hmm. like the stars don't always sell the story, right? But you know, they can sometimes for sure, but. You know, like having a good desire and fitting in with the program, I think is what he's focusing on the most. So, yeah, you kind of you kind of saw it like the like in against Ohio State when they played, they didn't have the pieces, mm-hmm. but he obviously had like implemented a game plan that would make them successful. But they just don't have yeah. the star power yet to actually like make it come into like like make it a reality. Well, but that, yeah, that I mean, cool and it's. Well, yeah, you know, and it's also going to be tough when you have Chase Young on one end and Nick Bosa on the other end. That's just, you know, <laughs> no, that's yeah. just a nightmare there. But yeah, but it was just, it was just that was a, that was a fun game to see. Like, it, I love watching the Beavers. Like, I say this all the time. Like, at least they score points now because there was like a oh, stretch yeah, where like they know? don't they didn't even score any points. Well, yeah, I mean, they went to Michigan three years before that, and they scored on their first drive, and then <laughs> they didn't score again. <laughs> So, yeah, yeah, you know, I just, I definitely see a program change. You know, the players, especially the seniors last year who were a part of the Anderson uh, era, you know, they, you know, they wanted to be there and they, well, yeah. And like, one thing I noticed about the Anderson era is when they got out of games, they stopped playing, they stopped trying, but you know, going back to the kind of of Anderson blew it. They had a hidden gem in Marcus McMarion, and they didn't use mm-hmm. it at all. <laughs> we had they used Daryl Garrettson. Yep, and um, you know, like that's just I so frustrating. And Seth Collins, because he was the quarterback oh, yeah, before wide right. receiver. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that one stings, and the and and just to see the amount of success he had at Fresno State when. He left, understandably. I was like, you know, that's good for him. It's good for him to, you know, get a success somewhere else because he needed a chance to play. And he got a guy it. like that going to Oregon State or having a weapon like that is like, I feel like they've never, they have really, really had a quarterback that like that in a while. <laughs> and then to blow it. Yeah. <laughs> like that's dumb. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, and Jake Luton, even last year, you know, he had like three picks all year. And no, yeah, two of them solid. weren't even his fault because they got tipped at the line or just dropped. Yeah, Jake Luton got you know, caught by the defender. Yeah, I'm excited to see what he does in Jacksonville. And I if think he gets a shot, you know, though. that's I, what you're talking about before. Think, like, we're like, I don't know if he's going to get shot. You never know. I think he will. You think so? Is, as much as I, you know, everyone loves Gardner Minshew for his mustache and, you know, his headbands and, I don't – he's not that good. I mean, he's definitely good, but, like, mm-hmm. at the pro level, I can't see him he's just being he's like Baker the Jacksonville. 
Yeah, he, I mean, he's definitely a Walmart version of Baker Mayfield. Um, <laughs> you know, he's, I mean, he's got some talent. Like, I can't sit here and say he sucks. Yeah, he shredded in college. Like, it was not a question. Well, yeah, he I mean, like, he Wazoo was preparing. Well, yeah, and he was preparing to be a, to go to Alabama to be an assistant coach. Wait, really? Like, yes. Like, if he wasn't, like, his last chance was with Washington State. Yeah, that's why Nick Saban was going to have him come on. Well, he was going to have him come on, you know, as a coach after wow. he was done at college and become a graduate assistant. That's crazy. But then Washington State that. swooped in and said, hey, you want to become our quarterback? But yeah. It's definitely Jake Luton, I think, in a couple of years, as long as he continues to improve, I think he could be that starting quarterback for the Jags unless they mm-hmm. draft Trevor Lawrence. And, you know, then that would put a real damper in plans. So, yeah, dude, I don't know where I'm going to, it's going to be interesting to see where like the top quarterback prospects land. Cause they all want to play, but like, it's just going to, do you think their draft stock's going to get impacted at all? If like this season doesn't like take place, like it's going to be weird. How are you, what are you going to base? It? I mean, obviously they have game film, but at the same time, yeah. it's like, you're only as good as your last game in a way. Well, yeah. Wow. And I, well, I mean, especially with Justin Fields, especially right. because the Big Ten's already canceled their season. I mean, there wasn't anyone on Ohio State's schedule that was going to be like, okay, like if he does this against this team, he is really good. No, I mean, he went. I mean, the Oregon game was like, pretty massive. Oh, yeah, that's true. I did forget about that one. That one would have definitely been a good one. But conference-wise, I mean, if they would have just played a conference schedule, they there's no one. Everyone. Well, yeah, and they ran through everyone, and they basically played the same teams. Right. Like that Big Ten, I mean, for except a couple of teams, they weren't, no one really going to give Ohio State a run for their money, anyways. And so I think for guys like that, no. But I think if Trevor Lawrence would have a bad year, which Trevor I don't Lawrence think he is will. Good. Yeah, he's is definitely good. Decision making, iffy at times, but he always clutches up in big games. Yeah, and you know I'm like, not really a huge fan of Clemson at all, but no, I gotta yeah. put uh, <laughs> I gotta put respect on Trevor Lawrence's name, dude. Um, he's like it, very good. It's so weird though, because he like when the national championship came around and they mm-hmm. were playing LSU, I was like, Clemson literally doesn't have a shot. Yeah, <laughs> but they they actually were in the game, which yeah, is for insane. a while, yeah. dude. Poor Oklahoma got absolutely stomped, bro. Which doesn't make it too much. I mean, uh, their defense isn't there, but I'm surprised they didn't score more points. Yeah, but, you know, I think when you play cupcake defenses for the most part in, in a you know Big 12 conference that is historically known, you know, especially this decade, to be a bad defensive conference, um, I think playing like a team like LSU who was just destined to win it. Like, let's be honest here. Like that, yeah. <laughs> they were definitely going to go ahead and win, but yeah, it's, it's definitely hard on big 12 schools, especially when, you know, you can schedule these sec schools or big 10 or whatever, but you only play them once. Mm-hmm. It's like, you get a consistent, you know, 10, 12 games with good defenses. No. <laughs> yeah. Do, uh, so, do you think that, like, to me, it would be so much fun. Do you think that there will ever be a time where, like, the Power Five branches out and, like, tries to do its own thing? Like, because I think it would be so interesting if, like, the best teams from, like, each conference made their own. Yeah. League. Like, that would be crazy. Like, it's I know it sounds, like, super far-fetched, but, like, the more I think about it, like, it could happen someday. Yeah, I mean, especially with the NCAA, like, I don't know. I could just see. Yeah. Like how good, I how mean, cool we, it would, it would ramp up the competition because like, like there's a big drop off between um, like, cause like the SEC literally dominates. Like it literally, <laughs> like, so like here's the thing though, like with, with the big 10 in the, um, with the big 10 and the Pac-12 canceling their season, it doesn't really matter. Like it doesn't really no. matter. The SEC and ACC play; those are the teams that are going to probably make it anyway. Because Clemson's going to make it, and then they pick a team from the SEC, and that's most likely going to make it. Like it just like there's a big drop up. But I feel like if teams actually played each other more, I don't know. I feel like there'd be a more chance for like to close the gap. Oh yeah, and I mean, also I think that would like 
I'd say something that would close the gap isn't necessarily the schools, it's the coaches. Because we, you know, Oregon State just had a four star running back, Tamir Collins, out of Jefferson up in Portland commit. And he said the, the main reason why he committed is because he had a good relationship with the coach, the running back coach. Mm-hmm. And so I don't necessarily think it's um, the, like, the talent or whatever. I mean, yeah, you have that. But you I also have to think about the location. Yeah. I mean, you got to think like, about locations. Like, let's be honest here. Like, if you're, you know, like California or Texas or Florida recruit and Oregon State comes knocking on your door and they don't have anything to blow you away, why would you even look at them? Yeah. Because, like, who, like, who, I mean, like, there are definitely people who want to come live in Oregon. Don't get me wrong. But, you know, Oregon as a state isn't, you know, that doesn't have the nicest weather most of the year. It always rains, it seems like, or whatever else. And so it's just the locations of the schools, I think, is what in the, you know, the programs like Alabama is not necessarily the nicest place, but yet oh, we yeah. have such a culture. The culture and the coaches, I think, are what predetermines, or I shouldn't say predetermined, but gives, you know, schools an edge in recruiting, along mm-hmm. with, you know, some side money, you know, that SEC schools like to throw to recruit sometimes. Yeah. But, I think it would be so interesting if like contract or something came into play eventually. Like me and Jonah were talking about that. Like it would be so interesting if guys came in and because like it's going to be interesting to see how many guys like don't go into the play college basketball because they can just go straight into the G League. Yeah. I mean, uh, it, yeah. Like that's, that's not a good thing for the NCAA. No, it, it's not. But I don't think the NFL will ever do something like that where there's a you know, uh, like a minor league NFL because you already have like, no, but like, what so if ha- what if you have those schools in a conference together and you have your own mini NFL that's separate from the NCAA and then you yeah, just that and those guys that would be wild. <laughs> <laughs> it yeah, wouldn't be know, affiliated with the NFL though. Yeah, that's definitely an interesting topic that, you know, seems really hard fetched, like I mentioned earlier. No, but the, the, like, uh, anything is possible nowadays. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to say Things that. that we thought were never going to happen or we're literally living in it right now. Yeah. No. Yeah. Most definitely. It'd be crazy. Yeah. But the only the, the shitty thing would be that the teams like Oregon and um, like Alabama, it would they would only separate themselves even farther because it's only the teams with money they can really do something like that. Well, yeah, and I think if, you know I think that's why that wouldn't happen is because then it becomes such an unfair balance. Like yeah. we're already talking, you know, about like big name schools, you know, already getting all the big recruits or whatever else. To me, that would just make teams not even want to join unless they had the financial power to go after a four or five star recruit Mm -hmm. and be okay. Yeah. And the interesting thing is like some of the best guys don't even come from like power five conferences anyway. No, they don't. It's (laughs) like, it's kind of funny. Well, yeah, because like all these five and you know, like these five star recruits saying they just haven't made like, like they just assume that they're just going to walk in, you know, play for three years and just be a first round pick. Yeah. But if they don't play hard enough or they don't do something well enough, hey, there's a guy who's a three-star or two-star recruit who will happily take your job and happily take your spot. Right, exactly. Like Adam Thielen went to like Minnesota State. Yep. Or, <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> I, 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 didn't, I didn't even know that was a thing until he got drafted from there. So yeah, I know. You definitely have people who – I mean, you we'll literally some of the spot. best quarterbacks didn't even come from D1 school. I mean, they came from D1 school, but they weren't like that most highly touted prospect. It's crazy. Well, yeah, Mahomes was a three star. Yeah, and he Texas went to Texas Tech. 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 And, yeah, and I mean, they, granted, they're an offensive based school, right? But still, you know, it's not you know somewhere you'd expect a top five quarterback in the league to be going to school. Right. Exactly. Um, I wanted to ask you. Like not this is, doesn't have anything to do with this, but like, okay, were you gonna play? Um, were you planning on playing like sports this year? Yeah, uh, you know, I was definitely gonna, you know, try and play baseball. Um, yeah, how but, was like that is terrible. Yeah, were uh, you lined up? Where you you guys are gonna go to Arizona and stuff, right? Yeah, that team was Dude, definitely gonna com- go to Arizona. That is complete ass. Yeah, yeah. Talking to you know those guys, you know, they were really butthurt about that, and 
you know, I probably would have been too, because, you know, for some of those guys, they didn't get to go two years ago. And so, you know, they were getting ready to go, and, you know, like less than like three weeks, you know, before they left, you know, they canceled school, they canceled sports, and then here we are. <laughs> so. I know. Do you, do, you, do you see that Justin Fields is doing like a petition? Like, I don't know. Like, do you think that'll even yeah, be? Yeah. Like, I really, like, what even is the point of doing that? Besides, like, trying to get people I mean, behind you, like, how many, because, it, like, it, does it really matter how many signatures you get? Like, it's all ultimately up to the ADs of the school and, like, the, the, like, the whole, like, the heads of, like, the directors to, like, give the go on whether they can play or not. See, here's, see, here's why I think that could have, you know, some potential movement is because money, like, everything, you know, is based no, on yeah, money that's definitely one way or another. These programs literally like, are Oregon funding State. their smaller programs. Well, yeah. I mean, I Oregon State, so you know, I mean, they... Oregon State they hiking have, needs football. I think, well, yeah, and that athletic department for not playing football is going to lose, you know, $50 million. You know, and that's a lot. But I would imagine a bigger school like Ohio State or Michigan or Penn State would lose more. Right, exactly. It's so scary. So, that's why I think that, you know, those petitions or whatever else could do something. It's just because that's so much money that you lose, you know, and, you know, I understand player safety. Like I totally get that, but you know, for some of these smaller power five schools, like a Maryland or Rutgers or whatever else, like that $50 million doesn't just come as easy, you know, from the boosters like Ohio state has. Yeah. So, yeah, it's just such a crappy situation. Like Stanford cutting all their programs. I literally said this before. Like, it's just, it's going to be so interesting to see what adjustments they make because you, ne- like, literally, it's so interesting. Like, everything's based off of like three main sports. And if those things go away, it's just like, you're so screwed. Like, it's just, it's, <laughs> we're like in a really shitty spot. Well, yeah. I just, you know, I, I think Nick Shaven said it best, you know, I think the players would be a lot safer doing what they're doing now than going home and having, you know, the exposures to non, you know, controlled environments like the universities have right now. Mm -hmm. And so I definitely understand where Nick Saban is coming from in that, but you know, it's a toss up, you know, because players, you know, those are like 18, 20 year old kids. Like, you know, they're not going to want to just sit at home. Mm Mm-hmm. Exactly. And so I see where he's coming, you know, I definitely see where he's coming from, but you can make a case for both sides. I think that they're going to, I think that the things are going to turn around qu- quickly. I think that they're going to try and make something happen like in the spring or something. Yeah. I mean, both the big 10 and Pac 12 have said, you know, they want to shoot for spring sports. Right. So that's, you know, that's encouraging to hear. It's going to be, do you think the, what do you like? How is that going to affect baseball and stuff like the overlap? <sighs> Well, you know, I think it's like, push everything back. I think baseball and all the spring sports will, you know, stay the same. I, you know, I do because, you know, you don't really have very many, if any kids that play on the baseball and football team. Right. And so yeah. you, you don't necessarily have players. And, you know, if you don't want to schedule baseball games and football games on the same weekend, I totally get that, you know, alternate, you know, OSU has a home series against Washington this weekend. They're on the road at Arizona state this weekend. Yeah. So there's definitely ways to get around all that stuff. And I can see spring football and all that stuff happening for sure. Right. Yeah. But the thing is like the biggest deal, like even if they play, they're still going to be losing so much revenue with fans not being there. You know, but you don't know, they, get, they like, get a bunch of money from the TV deals, right? Oh yeah. That's, that's how it works. It's not. Yeah. It's definitely not. I mean, like the fans help. But, you know, the Pac-12 Network or Fox or ESPN pays millions of dollars, you know, for two or three guys to go out there and broadcast that game. You know, and they'll get, you know, six or seven figures, you know, worth of fans and then money. Yeah. So, exactly. yeah. But, you know, I'd like to hope and I like to pray that by the springtime we'll be able to go to game. But it's hard. Yeah. Um, have you been watching the Blazers at all? Obviously. You know, yeah. wait, have you not been? <laughs> so I'm more of a Lakers fan. Oh, um, wait, yeah, you're a Lakers fan. That's going to be interesting. <laughs> that is very interesting. 
You know, but I definitely you're you're all over the place. All, yeah, you know, most of my teams are on the West Coast, so most. Of um, them, I like yeah. thinking my. I mean, how do you? Like you kind of, but <laughs> whoever's good, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> That's yeah, right. you know, Alabama's my favorite school. You know, the Yankees definitely my favorite baseball team. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. Um, but so, do you, do you, have you always been a Laker fan? Oh, yeah, because I've seen yeah. you run around in a LeBron jersey. Well, yeah, and I grew up a Lakers fan because my dad was a Lakers fan growing up. And right. he, like, that'd be the only team we'd watch on TV when there was a basketball game on. And so eventually I was just like, I guess I'm a Lakers fan now. And yeah. so... Yeah, that's how I. And, that's know, how base. Uh, how I was too. I I just grew up watching the Warriors and Niners and the Giants, and so like it kind of it's just kind of shitty when you're younger and you like because I knew I knew a, a, like a little bit, but like I didn't know a ton. But like I would say like I'm a Warriors fan, but like if they're good, people are. Well, just yeah. Like, then it was like, oh, you're. Uh, I, but good thing like I actually so. knew my stuff for because like people would ask me. Yeah. And but then I'm like I actually know what I'm talking about, but it's hilarious how many bandwagons there are. Like I could ask you like name, like the starting five and you just say Steph Curry. And it's like, okay, shut up. Well, yeah. And hold on one second. I have please. <laughs> Sorry about that. Bless you. My cat's next to me. Oh, that's okay. Thank you. But um, yeah. Um, how do you see yeah, that? No, series I mean, like out? everyone, call- <laughs> you know, I think if Portland has a real shot, they're going to need 40 from the aim at least every night. <laughs> and they got to hold yeah. AD and LeBron to less than 30 a piece. And so, you know, the I Lakers mean, lost a lot of depth, though. So there's that, too. Uh, but I mean, like, <laughs> you, if you got to sneeze, you got to You got to sneeze, you got to sneeze. It's all good. <laughs> um, but the thing is, if they, if they can distribute the wealth a little bit, like spread the wealth and get like 20 from Nurk, 20 from uh, CJ. 20 from like uh what's his face gary Mello. oh yeah mellow and if you like you <laughs> know you get a big game from dame i mean like i feel like anything's possible oh yeah i mean definitely you know there's no home court advantage and where yeah so, exactly where do you where I do mean, you where do you see the um series kind of ending like you, you see- know i uh, i see lakers in five or six you know i definitely you know, think, you know, the Lakers or, you know, the Blazers from the team that Lakers played after the death of Kobe Bryant and the Blazers won. And so, you know, I think if there's a little piece there for the Lakers to say, you know, like, hey, you know, but I also think this whole season's about Kobe. And so I have a hard time thinking whether the NBA rigs it or not that the Lakers like don't at least get to the finals. Hey, let's take a break on this and uh, talk about since we're talking about rigging. Um, 110% the Super Bowl is absolutely fucking fixed. Oh, yes. 105,000% it was fixed. Like, it is not even a question. Man, I don't even like talking about that because that still hurts to this day. I've literally had nightmares, and I have never... Like, the game highlights... I can't watch uh, the highlights past no. the third quarter. I haven't watched a dude. I haven't watched a single second of a highlight from that Super Bowl. It literally, since. gives such bad nightmares at night. Well, yeah, you know, Bjorn and Anders can definitely test this. So I was watching it at their house once. Damian Williams scored that last time. I just got up and left. I didn't say a word. I didn't say anything. Like my like, I don't. Oh, that was just awful. And <laughs> I mean, did, who, who, did you grow up as a, a Niner fan as well? Oh yeah, that's right same thing. Like my whole family was a Niner fan. Um, that's sick. Let's go. Yeah, uh, you know there was definitely some hard times. You know earlier this decade past. Oh yeah, yeah I, I know. As soon as we moved into Levi's, I was just like, yeah, this stadium's cursed. We're never going to win another <laughs> but then playoff Jimmy game G ever. Came. Yeah, and I just. But then after, even how- after Jimmy G came, we still kind of struggled a little bit. But that was only because he. Got hurt. Injuries, injuries. Like the whole, like our old team, except yeah. George Kittle. And they were literally on the precipice of being a winning team every single season. They suck. Besides Kyle Shanahan's like first year there. Six, okay, Jimmy G went like six and zero oh as uh-huh. a starter in twenty seventeen after yeah. he got traded. Yeah. Like that. I mean, obviously, like we weren't that upcoming season. They were when so, he tore. Yeah, so I many mean, games by less than like 
I forget, less than a touchdown. But hey, you know, going, you know, four and 12 or whatever, you know, it was last year. Really? Yeah, we got Nick Bosa. (laughs) Yeah, we literally got one of the best pass rushers in the game. And he's only coming into his second year of the league. Which is absolutely crazy. Yeah, I just hate how much hate he gets because if you look at him, you know, stat, you know, wise, he's definitely a top 10 quarterback. And for people to sit here and say, well, the defense did this and that, well, the defense was the one who let down the fourth quarter of the Super Bowl. Everyone wants to point to Jimmy G and say, you're the reason you it's lost. So annoying. The defense gave up 21, you know, unanswered points in that fourth quarter. Yeah. And we're just uh, not going to talk about that. Absolutely doesn't help that um, D Ford was getting held the entire game. Also, Nick Bosa was getting held. Also, um, what was another thing? Joe Staley got absolutely worked by Frank Clark the entire game. <laughs> there yeah. was zero passing lanes, absolutely yeah. zero, and everything just gets pinned on Jimmy G. It's hilarious. The one, I mean, he he played a better game overall than Patrick Mahomes did. Mahomes, yeah, I know Mahomes literally sucked, dude. Like, I mean, he threw two picks, and you know yeah. he, he barely had two hundred yards passing. And, you know, we're sitting here saying this and that. I mean, Mahomes is definitely good. He's probably better in, like, 99% of things that they do. But, you know, for him to say – or people to say Jimmy G was the reason they lost, that's just wrong. That's straight wrong. It's yeah, on yeah. the defense. Wait, give me your top 10 quarterbacks in the league right now. Top 10? Number one, Lamar Jackson. Number two oh, – Boy, let's go. Dude, <laughs> me and you think alike. Me and you think alike. Lamar Jackson, 100% number one quarterback in the league. Number two is Patrick Mahomes. Number three, I'd have to go with Russell Wilson. You as know, much as th- I don't want to say it. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, as much as he's He's an Francisco. absolute killer, dude. Like, he, Anytime you give him the ball in the final two minutes on bro, a game-winning drive, it's over. No like, one extends just, plays like Russell Wilson. No, no. No one avoids sacks like Russell Wilson. I don't know how he's been able to do so successfully because Seattle's O-line has sucked since he's been there. Yeah, I know, and he they've he had a couple really, nice pieces, but that's it. Yeah, they have like Dwayne Brown or whatever. Well, yeah, and they had um, Max Unger when he started there before they traded him for Jimmy Graham. But, but yeah, they've been a real issue forever. Even when they suck, they're still good just because of him. I mean, <laughs> I mean that, that defense is just atrocious, and they need to do something it's better about that now. If they ever, I mean, it's better, but they're not going to get Clowney back. So. You know, you traded a first round pick, I think. To be honest, over. I will actually, ra- I'd rather have them have Jamal Adams than Jadavian Clowney. Jadavian Cl- Clowney gave teams, especially the Niners, problems. Like, he worked Joe Staley. Like, but granted, he was coming back, but yeah. I mean, that Monday night game, that was brutal. The left side of the line was probably the Niners' like, weakest um, yeah. part of their team because, like, then- when they. Like Zadaria Smith would he to- like even though the Niners like destroyed the Packers on I think it was Sunday night. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah, it was Sunday night. They like Zadaria still got his like he still messed shit up. Yeah, but like yeah, as long as you don't have pass rushers, I'd way rather you have a solid secondary because we're just gonna eat you up. And we're just gonna hand the ball off every single down. Well, yeah, I mean we proved in the playoffs last year if like if we can just run the ball. We'll run the ball. Like there's yeah. If there's I mean, if there's no need to pass, why pass when you can just run for five, six yards of play with Raheem okay. or whether it's you know Tevin Coleman or hopefully Jerk, you know, and so if he can just stay healthy and that backfield in San Francisco, yes, losing Matt Breida hurts, but he was Dude, I loved Matt Breida, now. but for some reason he was in Kyle Shanahan's doghouse. I don't understand why. It was because he had fumbling problems. I barely saw him fumble. Like what? I I, I loved. I absolutely you. loved Mavrita. Yeah, they honestly stopped feeding him, and it was like getting annoying. I think it's just because of the emergence of Raheem Mostert. I I really think that's it. They just had to find some reason to push Mavrita out. Like it pisses me off. He, was, I mean, real realistically, he was the odd man out from week eight on. Like I know it f- made me so mad because I literally love him. He's just literally so fast. Yeah, and I think the Dolphins got a really good running back for a fifth round pick. They did, yeah. yeah. He what they what they lacked in get, when they got rid of Kenny and Drake. You're gonna get it right back as long as he stays healthy. Like he is so, yeah. good. He's, he's so, good. he's the fastest running back in the league. Yeah, his his <laughs> touchdown against the Browns was like the fastest, 
um, top end speed in the league that year. Yeah, twenty two and a half miles an hour. Like I wish I could run twenty two and a half miles an hour. Yeah, like, <laughs> but honestly, like the way that the Niners play, they have to have such good depth at running back. But I like yeah. I like Jeff Wilson, and if Jarek, I don't even I don't even know what to think of Jarek McKinnon. I, I have to see him play. I he literally played one game. He's played he like one game. Ma- yeah, and yeah, it was a not even game. Yeah, it was one preseason game he played in, and then he tore his ACL. But you know, watching him in Minnesota, watching his highlights there, I mean, he's definitely got talent. He's just got to stay on the field. Yeah, but is he the same player? You know, I you know, I've seen reports or whatever else from training camp saying you know like he's looking good, you know like this and that. But a guy that there are two guys in particular that I really want to keep my eye on with San Francisco's training camp. That's Jalen Hurd and Trent Taylor. Trent Taylor is a very slept on receiver, and he Jalen Hurd. But he's is they're a, both always freaking hurt. Hurd's physical. Jalen Hurd is literally he. I think he he was limited to day in practice. Well, but I also saw today that he had an explosion on the coaching staff today. So let's hope that that you know really? gets. But yeah. Trent Taylor, I like Trent Taylor. Well, yeah, like, him and George Kittle are best friends. <laughs> yeah, Trent Taylor's going to be so like if if they find a way, because because I feel like Trent Taylor could get lost in the mix if teams are focusing on Debo Kendrick and George. Yeah, and definitely. if you find a way to get him open, and then you got Brandon Ayuk too that spreads the field, and then also Debo. I wanted. To, I want, yeah, exactly. But I wanted to ask you about what do you think about um, Tavon Austin? I think Tavon Austin could actually be a weapon that they can. Yeah. Use. Well, yeah. I if mean, he plays, if he he can play running back too. Yeah, and he could probably be a you know return specialist. Although that's looking like that's going to be Brandon Ayuk's job to lose. And I personally saw what he can do as a returner when ASU played Oregon State last year. He returned a punt for a touchdown. Uh, but I, yeah, the Ducks had a firsthand account of how good Brandon Ayuk was when he torched the Ducks on like they yeah got, it was like eighty a, yard pass yeah, uh, but yeah, it's the game no yeah, exactly but, the Ducks I don't understand that game was insane did you watch that whole thing no because I was coming back from the West uh, State playoff game down at Austin, oh really and then the I Ducks decided home. to just play football in the fourth quarter like I didn't understand yeah. what happened there <laughs> they're just like all right let's actually play. I was like, well, oh, yeah, let's, let's also didn't, drop 21 in the fourth quarter. Like, why can't I was also watching the Oregon State Washington State football game? God, I hate talking about that. What <sighs> game? Which game? The Oregon State Washington State game? Yeah. Like, Dude, that literally broke my heart. Oh my God. That game literally made me so mad. They can board it on a fourth and long, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. And, you know, the hey. secondary just t- took a dump. But. Yeah. You know who's slept on it, at quarterback? Ooh. Uh, is it what's his name, Anthony Gordon? Oh, uh, dude, I like uh, that guy. That guy can sling it. I'm just happy he's gone. I'm just happy he was a one year guy like Minshew was, bro. But he is good. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I, <it's, laughs> I, I, he has like, I don't know what it is. Like, I, I, like he has that like look. Like he literally, the way he like slings the ball. I'm just like, damn. Yeah. <laughs> Like he, he got like a really fluid motion, and I feel like he could be like a sleeper. Like he could maybe be like a pretty solid backup QB, or if he gets a shot, I don't you know. know. I speaking of QBs, a guy who I have a hard time believing is going to translate super super well to the NFL is Justin Herbert. I'm sorry, that I might make a lot of Duck fans mad, but I I just don't think Justin Herbert's going to be that great in the NFL. He's got the size, he's got the tangibles, but the Chargers you know, so, think he's the guy. I mean, yeah. The Chargers I mean, really think he's the guy. And I, to be honest, like, I really like Justin Herbert. But what concerns me is the Rose Bowl. Yeah. The, that Rose Bowl game concerned the absolute shit out of me because he had to win that game with his legs. He was overthrowing receivers. The accuracy, accuracy, the accuracy is, is, is the scariest thing. And that's kind of the only thing I had when Marcus Mariota went into the NFL. His accuracy, too, overthrew lots of footballs. Obviously, yeah. he was one of the best. But that's the thing. Like, I just don't I, – I, I definitely agree with you. I don't know how well I, – I, I really hope he does good because he's such a good guy. But, like – Yeah, <laughs> most definitely. I really <sighs> don't know how he's going to do. 
you know, I mean, if he does great, then, you know, good for him. But if he doesn't, eh, you know, I wouldn't necessarily be all that shocked. That's all I'm going to say. Dude, yeah. What do you, so what do you think about the quarterback, the quarterbacks that just came into the NFL? I think Joe Burrow will hands down have the best career. Hands down. I don't, I love Joe Burrow. I absolutely love that man. But I don't. I don't really like Joe Burrow. I don't know why I like him so much. He's just caught my attention ever since that Texas game last year when they played Texas. But, you know, I. But I don't overall. He's going to be an immediate impact. No, and he's probably not going to. The Bengals suck. Right. But he thinks that. I, th- I really deeply in my heart think that he's. He thinks that he's going to be like the Messiah. I mean, it he makes sense. A lot of games, but it's just not I mean, going to work. It's not, it's not going to happen. No, and it's probably not going to happen. You have to play the Bengals twice. I mean, the Ravens twice. Yeah, you still. I mean, you have Pittsburgh. You have to play the you know, Steelers, that, who are raw, low key under the radar. That defense Pittsburgh has is very talented, dude. The the rate uh, the Steelers arguably gave the Niners one of their top five hardest games of the season. Granted, San Francisco just fumbled their way, you know, throughout <laughs> that whole game. Like that was just bad to watch how many times they fumbled the ball. To be fair though, uh the Steelers kind of blew it too with fumble. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what kind of sums up Jimmy G's confidence is his touch to his touchdown to Dante Pettis when yep. it was like easily could have been that route was almost could have been jumped. Like yeah. Jimmy G, like some of the passes, like I love the man's, but some <laughs> yeah. of the stuff, some of the stuff he does keeps me on the edge of my seat. Oh yeah, where do you where do you, so wait? Finish your top ten list of quarterbacks. Okay, so, you got, so at I, three, so at three, I had Wilson. At four, probably Drew Brees. Yeah, I like Drew Brees a lot. Five, I'll go Deshaun Watson. Yeah. For sure. Number six. Ooh. So I'll go Tom Brady six. I still think he's pretty good. I think yeah. he's going to do well in Tampa. I don't. Uh, no. I don't. They're overrated. <laughs> overrated, dude. Overrated. I'm telling you. Number seven. Oh. Number seven. I'll probably go with uh, 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 Dak. Uh, number eight. I'll go Jimmy G. Number nine, Aaron Rodgers. And that's going to make some people mad. That that really is. It's and fair, if, though. It's literally fair. If we're he, talking four or five years ago, Aaron Rodgers is hands down the best quarterback. Hands yeah. down. But he looked a little, little off last year. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. he's, he's less mobile. And that's... I mean, he can still make plays. Definitely. Oh, well, yeah, I know. Obviously. <laughs> but he... I don't know. He's definitely not the. I don't. I don't think he's the same QB. And number ten to close it out, I'll go Matt Ryan. Matty Ice. Yeah. I'm trying to think. That's a pretty good list. You got Dak at seven. Oh, wait, 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 hold on. I'm gonna make one quick adjustment. I think because so, like there's Josh Allen and Carson. I was Williams. just. I was gonna say. Josh Allen's going to go to eight. Aaron Rodgers is ten. I'm a bump out Matty Ice. And to me, wait, I where, where the hell? Wait, where the hell is Jimmy G at? Nine. Okay. So, so, so yeah, <laughs> just got bumped back one spot. Okay. But wait, what about um, Carson Wentz? <laughs> you know, this is also going to make some people mad. I, I have a hard time believing in Carson Wentz. I haven't seen. <laughs> Enough of him, and it might just be because you know, we're on the West Coast and we don't get Eagles games all the time. And, yeah. But he was good in that uh-huh. year they won the Super Bowl. But he yeah. didn't win that Super Bowl. <laughs> no, he didn't win that Super Bowl at all. No, I mean, and last year he did his best with an absolutely awful receiving core that Philly had. Mm-hmm. But to me, he's too he's too injury prone. And I don't think – I mean, he's definitely good. But yeah. until I win a couple playoff games and do something productive, more productive, I can't put him in my top ten. Yeah, I agree 100%. I'd so much got, rather switch Jimmy out Jimmy 10, G. Though. Jimmy G's got to be top ten. People hate him, though. People hate on him. He's been to a Super Bowl. I know. I don't he, care he, what he li- says about that defense back back in. He literally balls out. Still playing in a Super Bowl. He balls out. 
I just don't understand like the argument. Like I don't know. He's he's a, he, like you put literally put him on any team instantly better, instantly better. Yeah, I love Josh Allen too. I think Josh Allen yeah, be Josh the best Allen? quarterback out of that 2017 draft. Yep. Yeah, or 2018, whatever it was. Josh but, Allen is an absolute savage. I had Kyler Murray in my top ten. Yeah, I, I mean, I can see why people would like. I, I like, love I that really guy. Do. I do too, Boomer Sooner. But oh yeah, <laughs> I mean, he's tiny. Like he's like my height. I'm like but it five, doesn't 10. matter. Man's runs so good. Grade. Yeah, he oh. he's so good, and being in open Mario space, he has a cannon. Yes, he does, and he can throw the run very well, you know. But I think, okay, here's also what I'm going to say. I think if Carson Wentz doesn't do his job, at least to you know, to par or very well, I think in two or three years we can see Jalen Hurts take over that job. When I went and saw Jalen Hurts play in October, I, I really I like Jalen Hurts. I was amazed of how well of how physical he was for a quarterback. How, how how deceivingly fast he is! He's got good he size. Going. He gets going. He, he he is a truck coming down, you know, hill, and he's a he's pretty accurate. And he's Tua, such a good quarterback. Yeah, and if he if Tua doesn't come along, he he lost two games at Alabama. Man's is a winner. <laughs> yeah, so he just got pushed out. Yeah, I mean, what are you gonna do when a guy comes in for a half and like literally saves a game? So, yeah. but. Everyone I has so much respect for him. Oh, yes, because he's a great leader. He's a great guy. Yeah. Like, you don't ever hear about Jalen Hurts getting in, you know, off the field troubles, or whether it was in Alabama or, or in Oklahoma. So, he, he's going to be good. I really like that. I, like, it was confusing to me at first, but I really like that pick at, for the Eagles as, as long as I just don't want to see him wasting, like, wasted away. I don't think he will be, you know, they've talked about using him in different packages or what, you know, or whatever else. And so that's encouraging they just me need to put him as the starter package. Cause like he needs to <laughs> be the starter. I think, cause I just don't really trust Carson Wentz. Yeah. Like, I, think, I think he's really good, but if you can't stay on the field, I mean like, and if you're not in the playoffs to help if, when you're in the playoffs and you have to have McCown lead your team to the promise. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, like you got that's to, tough. It's just like it's just frustrating. It, I just can't imagine how oh, frustrating it is for to have fans. your guy that literally is the biggest difference difference maker, like not play in the biggest games of the season. Like, yeah, I mean, kind of granted, I'm sure you know that hit he took against Seattle last year in the playoffs was pretty serious. I mean, it looked like he got hit pretty hard. So I'm. I'm not gonna sit here and say you know he fakes injuries. He definitely no, no, no. Doesn't. He, he doesn't. Can't. He doesn't fake injuries. He just gets hurt, and it's annoying. It's, well, yeah, and it's in the worst time. And I'm yeah. sure. Oh, like, and I'm sure we're annoyed or whatever else. But I can't imagine how frustrated he is when that stuff happens. Oh yeah, like, for sure, for <laughs> sure. I really like like Carson Wentz is really good, but it's just like they, I just haven't there seen just it. Must enough. be something going on where it's like we drafted Jalen Hurts. For yeah. a reason, mm-hmm. with the second round pick, yeah, he he's way better than a second round pick too. Yeah, you it, could. Okay, I, but, it's like it's hard. Like it for it worked out good, but just like to me, he was way undervalued. You know, a guy. You know, a guy who I think is going to have a great career in the NFL, whether it's you know as a starter or a backup, is Shake Fromm. I love Jake Fromm. I love I love his skill set. I love his intangibles. Jake Fromm, behind Joe Burrow, was my was my favorite QB prospect coming out of this year. Yeah, he, he won some games. All. I mean, he, he did in the sixth round. So, yeah, I know, but like he didn't. He wasn't like it wasn't anything special. No, and like I was looking at a mock draft from March twenty. Got like about there was like this something one? about him though, right? That well, kept- yeah, I mean. Okay, I mean, but that whole like tweet th- or that message thing about like the white or the elite whites or whatever he said didn't come out until after he was drafted. So that that didn't have an impact on that. But are you sure? Yeah, I I I promise. Because that happened in like early May, and the draft was in April. Like it was like two oh. weeks maybe. But okay, Jake I thought Fromm's- it came out before. No, because they're because 
because that girl's sister was talking about how the Bills might, you know, cut him for that. Oh yeah, yeah, so, you're right, you're right, you're right. He's not going to play anyway. Yeah, I mean, but he's definitely a good backup to have for Josh Allen because if Josh Allen goes down, Jake Fromm's a winner. I mean, he went. You know, it's Georgia played in a national championship game. Probably should have won. Talk about host. Man, or Georgia got host in that game. Mm-hmm. But they shouldn't even have been a, there, though. No. Right. Yeah, no. Yeah, no. No, because they played they, Oklahoma. They, they, the, Oklahoma blew that game. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they were up by a crap. Now. Weren't they up by like a few scores? Yeah, I'm pretty sure their largest piece was like. Largest lead was like seventeen or something like that. But <laughs> yeah, I remember uh, that. Then Nick Chubb kind of went off, right? Nick Chubb and Sony Michelle, yeah. Oh yeah, Sony Michelle, Sony Michelle, yeah. Yeah, it, no, that's but a, Jake Fromm, in my opinion, could be the second best quarterback coming out of that class. Be, if he gets an opportunity somewhere, I think he'll turn some heads. <laughs> what do you think about Tua? <sighs> you know, every <laughs> that's that's exactly what I'm saying. Everyone's saying he's coming back great from that hip injury, but I really how, how do you do that? How do you come back great from that? And that was quick. I mean, yeah. that was like six months. You know, six months ago they were talking about he might never play again. Right. Yeah. And Sam, we're <laughs> yeah, I know. Here, yeah, we're sitting here like, oh, he's perfectly fine. Like it never right. happened. I want to see him play and r- run from some NFL defenders before I go out there on a limb and say, yeah, he's you know what he was before. Yeah, like I don't know how he's gonna feel comfortable sitting in the pocket of Miami behind Miami's offensive line. And feel safe that he can throw some, throw it around the yard. Like I don't yeah. know how that's gonna really work. He's gonna play the Bills defense twice a year. Yeah, no thanks. Yeah. Yeah. No thanks. The Pats. Yeah, 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 yeah. But the Pats. In all honesty, I don't. I don't care what anybody says. The Pats are gonna be like gonna give people tr- trouble. Like oh yeah. Definitely. Like Bill Belichick's, their defense is always pretty solid. Yeah, that week seven game against, or that yeah that week seven game, San Francisco New England, I think will be a better game than people are saying. Although you know anything can happen, the Pats just might be even better without Tom Brady. Who knows? <laughs> Dude, what if the what if the Patriots get their hands on Trevor Lawrence? Yeah, I'd probably <laughs> cry. I'd probably cry. <laughs> Dude, I think that's going to go down, bro. Tanking. They're going to tank. Yeah. I mean, it probably will happen. No, who in our think, luck. Who do you think Justin Fields will go to? I think he'll go Because that's got to be one and two, right? Well, yeah. You, I mean, you think. But Justin Fields... <sighs> Justin Fields probably is going to end up going to... <laughs> Sorry. Um, Justin Fields is probably going to end up going to Carolina. I think, you know, they saw Teddy they got, Bridgewater. I yeah, like yeah. Teddy. I do too. loves Teddy. Oh, I know. I wrote about it last night. <laughs> but, oh shit. <laughs> yeah, my cat is like right next to me and he is making me go crazy. Leave, you damn thing. <laughs> but, um, What's your hold cat? on. Let me uh, clean up my, my face because that was bad. <sighs> I was holding that one in for like a good like twenty minutes, but <laughs> you know, I your think allergies. Be... Wait, what? Are you like? Oh, is yeah. it just because outside, or is it like yes. your cats? Well, yeah, that it, it's outside. It's 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 my cat. It's everything. Like it is everything. Right. Yeah. Allergic to your cat, but I think it's <laughs> <laughs> that's that's tough. It's bad. So you think Carolina? I know before Carolina could be win. Uh, yeah. I don't know how they're going to do. If you know, better pops off though, that can ruin their plans. Carolina, or I can see Detroit being one. I think they could eventually move on from Matt Stafford. But Matt still has some juice left. I do too. But um, you don't think Matt's in your top ten QBs? I don't have him there personally. Yeah, you gotta you gotta win. Yeah, I mean, he's well, been actually, one. not a lot of guys. I mean, there hasn't, there's not like a crap ton of guys in there. I mean, like they, I mean, actually, the top ten guys obviously are on better team, but like the cow, like Dak is questionable. I think. Yeah, but most of those guys on the list have been to a Super Bowl or at least multiple playoff appearances or whatever else. Yeah, so I agree. so I'm gonna let's play. Okay, 
first i want to get like actually we'll go well let's circle back to the nba so like give us a little like break down how you think the blazers the lakers is going to go and then also how you think the remainder of the playoffs nba playoffs is going to go so <clears throat> i think la will win the first two games i think game one will be a little close i think game two will be a little more separated i think game three goes to portland game four will go to la and then game five portland game six la i just think I have a hard time thinking LeBron is going to, you know, have, you know, a hard test, you could say. Um, you know, have, I mean, like, Melo's good, but he's not LeBron. Yeah. I mean, he's never been a great defender, you know. Like, L.A. has a lot of depth, you know, especially in the front court now. Like, they used to have some in the back court. Either, they, either they're hurt or they're not in the bubble. But the depth up front, I the Lakers a lot, you mm-hmm. know, especially with how, you know, if Portland wants to run Zach Collins and Nurkic or whoever else and Nurkic. And so I think that's where LA could, you know, have something there. You know, the backcourt is a little mm, scary for me, you know. Yeah, they got to really score. They got to score and they got to keep Damian Lillard in check. The, um, thing, the thing for me is, the, I think the difference is. I really do, even though it was eight games, I really think that Blazers expended a lot of energy. They did. Getting just in that, short, in that short stretch, I think that they gave it their all just to get it, the eighth seed. Also, yeah. I like the Lakers. Like, I think that the Blazers match up well, but I don't, I don't know. Like, I mean, everyone's saying like the Lakers went like three and five or four and four in the bubble. You have to realize that he clinched the number one seed after the second game. You have to realize that Frank Vogel came out publicly and said, these, these rotations, I'm just messing around with to see what I like before the playoffs. Besides the one I, I already know they beat the Clippers when they had to, they beat the Nuggets or yeah, they beat the Nuggets. They beat the Jazz. Like, yeah, they might have lost the Kings or whoever else, but you have to realize they were messing around with their rotations a lot just to see if they had to, who they could play with, and like who did well. Mm-hmm. I so think I, uh, I okay, I really personally believe. You remember, is it the, uh, not the was it who did, when what round did the Blazers play the Warriors in last year? Wait, what was that? Sorry, I didn't hear you. <laughs> what round did the Blazers play the Warriors last year that the Warriors swept up? Oh, oh, the conference finals. Oh, yeah, that was West Conference Finals. Yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. Okay, I was about to say that, but I wasn't sure. Um, So I think it's going to be one of those things where the Blazers, they get up a lot. Yeah. But I think that the Lakers are going to close it out a lot. I think, yeah, I, I, really, I, think it's, I, I see a really similar situation there. Blazers are going to play good. They're going to maybe get up by 10 or 12, but then the Lakers are going to go on a run and close games out, and it's just going to be really frustrating series to watch. You know, like... For Blazers fans. Oh, yeah. I mean, like, I'll cheer for Portland whenever they're not playing the Lakers just because they're, you know, a local team or whatever. But I think you're exactly spot on with the, you know, the expended energy spot. You know, like they had to climb from three and a half back in eight games. Now, mm-hmm. granted, it helped that Memphis is like half of Memphis's team got hurt. So, you know, that hurt my wallet a little bit when I bet Bjorn twenty dollars. You know that before before the whole coronavirus thing happened, before I bet him twenty dollars that Portland wasn't going to make the playoffs. Well, you know, yeah, whatever. But they needed forty a night from Dame. They got they it. Need, they got it. But I really have a hard time believing he's going to be able to do that against a top yeah. five defense what, in the league. What he's the doing isn't sustainable, I don't think. And I'll, if never, it is, I'll never count. Congrats. Like, uh, yeah. yeah. No, you can't. And if he. I just have a hard time thinking he's going to be able to do it four, five, six, seven times even. Yeah. You know, in a series against the Lakers. Because he's playing all these different teams or whatever before well now you're in a series against the same team so yeah. they'll you know they'll be able to pick up a little bit better on what you want to do yeah you know than you know just watching on film against you know different teams so yeah how are the lakers matching up against the clips 
you know, we split the season series two two. Uh, you know, like I said, it hurts that you know a couple of our backcourt guys are gone, but you know they definitely have the advantage of the front court. Um, but well, yeah, yeah, it's you know if the Clippers won in a series, I would not be surprised. I'd be sad and I'd be butt hurt, but I would not be surprised. They are very talented, and I think the winner of the Western Conference will sweep or take. I sweep's a strong word, but I think they'll make quick work of the Eastern Conference team, whether it's the Bucks, the Raptors, the Celtics. I think it'll be quick work for whoever the West sends out. Yeah. Before that statement, like if I talked to you before, I've done a bunch of NBA things with Jonah. I would probably agree with you, but I think that the Raptors, for some reason, mm-hmm. I don't know what it is. They always scheme really well and they yep. shut down your best player. So, like, I think that the Raptors probably will give you a tough test no matter yeah. what. But uh, the well, Bucks, you, like, if Giannis clutches up, like, if he plays like Giannis, like, that's going to be really difficult because you can't really stop Giannis. Yeah, I mean, and I've heard or I've seen things on Instagram or, or like, Twitter or su- stuff like that where people will say the Raptors are the best coach team in basketball. Yeah. And you can definitely see that. Like, they were. I mean, Kellen, it's probably going to hurt your feelings a little bit. They were not as talented as the Warriors last year, but they came out and they took you guys to six. And it sucks that Katie got hurt and that well, but got it's, hurt. Well, like the not, the Warriors were far from like what they were. Yeah, like Clay getting hurt was devastating. They didn't have Kevon Looney because he was injured. Yeah, it's just a and then whole... Kevon Looney was out with that. Collar, right? Back, Collar, yeah, back, yeah, back, back, something. I don't know. And then, and then, um, Katie obviously busted his Achilles, and then, um, play towards ACL. Yep. And yeah, that's that's not that's a far from a fully vamped. Yeah. Work. So you know, it's, it, but it's I know what you mean it. though. Like they definitely did a really good job shutting down the Warriors. Yeah. When they had to, Toronto got stops for the most part. Oh, uh, and then Fred Van Vliet played his ass off. Yeah, you know, and that's the thing about every championship team in the NBA for the most part. There is an unseen hero that becomes a legend because he steps his game up in the playoffs and the finals. Yeah. So, and the Lakers have quite a few categories, or, or uh, I should say, they have quite a few players to step up for that category. Yeah, as the unseen hero. So, I'm not too concerned about Portland. The team that I'm scared most about in the West is either the Clippers or the Nuggets. Yeah. So, it'll be good though to see. But the Mavericks, it, <clears throat> Mavericks are a sleeper, and that'll make Caden happy. But the Mavericks are a sleeper. Like they, they are lethal on offense, and if they score enough points against you, they can hold their own so yeah the unicorn's a really big problem for teams like you can't leave him open luca you know no yeah luca obviously luca seth curry yeah as long as you just don't play into luca's little games like his hezzies and stuff like you can like shut him down but i mean like so everybody does so he's like (laughs) you know what i mean but yeah yeah it's so what do you what do you so you think lakers in uh six potentially yeah yeah I mean, and then I think you see it'll, either Lakers or Clippers versus who in the finals. <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm going to go with the Raptors. I just, you know, everyone wants to talk about the Bucks, you know, and everything. The Bucks were probably more talented last year than the Raptors, and the Raptors still went out. And Those won. that was a snoozer series. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Milwaukee got up too low, well, then the Raptors won four in a row, but. I just think Toronto's more well coached, and I think they have a lot of guys to play under the radar that do their jobs very well. Whether it's Pascal Siakam, OG Ananobi, Fred Van Vliet, you know, it's just a whole bunch of guys who don't necessarily get the attention, but they play very, very well. Yeah, they do. So it's going to be. You think the Raptors are coming out of the East? But who you know? Did you say who's coming out of West though? <laughs> You know, I'll go the Lakers in seven. That'll be probably one of the best playoff basketball series we've seen so far in recent memory. Oh, so, against the Clips? Yeah. You know, I 
you know, if there's a team that's going to be the Clippers besides the Lakers, it's going to be the Nuggets. The Nuggets are a handful with slim down Jokic, Jamal Murray. And if I was watching inside the NBA, if Michael Porter Jr. steps up to be that second true scoring option for Denver, they could even give the Lakers a real good shot there. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, the Nuggets are very good. There's, lo- saw there, there's lots of good teams. The Pacers are really good too. Yeah, if they can stay healthy, the Heat, I mean, the Celtics, I mean, the Sixers, if they were there's, healthy, there's I think so many good, have a shot. actually so many good teams. The Celtics? Yeah. Dude, the Celtics are actually solid. Like, don't yeah. count the Celtics out. Oh, yeah, most definitely. It's hard to count anyone out, really, for the most part. I mean, you, I mean, you obviously have, like, teams like the Magic or whatever else, but they're the Nets now. But, like, yeah, the Nets, the, Nets the top team. six teams – the Nets probably should have beat Portland for what Karis I saw. Levert, I didn't get a chance to Karis watch that Levert game. Is so good. But Kar- yeah. He is good. They're going to be an issue when they get Kyrie and KD fully healthy. That's, and if actually that's Karis be a plays a lot, team. they're going to be crazy. Yeah. Because there's three solid scoring options right there for the Nets. KD, Ky- KD Kyrie, and Karis LeVert right there. Mm-hmm. All right there. He single-handedly almost like – he, he he brought the um like when the Nets were down he brought them back like he was making some tough buckets it was crazy and he was finishing a lot that's where the Lakers I mean the Blazers are kind of weak in, on the inside and they let a lot of things like Jaw was getting in inside so easily yesterday it was yeah crazy. they did a good job in the first yeah, half I, and the second half and opened up yeah I mean but Nurk played his nuts off. Well, yeah, I mean, I was expecting him to once I saw that his grandmother passed away of the virus. I yeah, wasn't that's it. so sad. Yeah, I mean, it, it's sad, definitely. But, you know, he's going to put this chip on his shoulder, you know, but the Lakers, you know, have, you know, Anthony Davis, Dwight Howard, JaVale McGee, all, you know, it's a talented front court. Yeah. But, so, yeah, I agree. So you're going to go Lakers, Raptors. Lakers, Raptors. So, Lakers, Raptors, Lakers, and seven. Yeah, I think that'll be another series that goes to distance. But I think the Lakers just have too much talent. Eventually, talent will bail, an asterisk, bail the Lakers out. Yeah. Does an asterisk go by the Lakers championship? <laughs> uh, you know, as much as I'd like to say no, yes. I mean, because you still have – players you know from both sides it doesn't matter if it's, if it's the raptors the lakers the clippers whoever who aren't playing because of the virus they just didn't want to come down to the bubble which i get and you, you don't have home court and there's no fans there's no nothing so as much as i don't want to say there should be i can i can definitely see an asterisk next to the yep. lakers 110 percent 110 percent that's how I feel. But if a team like the Blazers wins, no asterisk. Like, if they win, like, that's crazy. Yeah. Okay, I'm just so disappointed that the Suns did not at least get a chance to play in that playing game because they were smoking. Yeah. I don't care what Anders or Bjorn says. Jonas says I that they were getting, like, weaker teams, though, because they weren't playing their, like, actual lineups. It's hard to say, but when D-Buck is dropping 50 or 60 a night, yeah, and you're getting solid, you know, guys, you know, from other like it's DeAndre Ayton or Macau Bridges. You know, yeah. you have these other options, and Suns fans should be kind of pumped Pump. a little bit here. They like, should be hey. excited. Honestly, like, that's it, a good way to go out. I know it probably sucks to not see your team progress, but like, that's not the worst way to go out. Them and Memphis. Memphis is going to be really good too. It just sucks that a lot of their guys didn't get to come down to Darren the bubble. Darren got, got hurt, too, right? Yeah, Jaron, yeah, it's just, see, it's just injuries at the wrong time, I think is what did Memphis in more than just the Blazers doing what they did. Yeah. Yeah. But the Blazers, the Blazers are crazy. Like if Oh yeah. McCollum is like when when McCollum and Dame are on, I, there's no one really like the war the only thing with the Blazers though, like they are gonna have to put up some serious numbers. Yeah, if they That's really the want to have, and I don't know if that's a sustainable for a seven-game series. I know I, de- I the, the Blazers can beat anybody in the league, but.
but I don't think that they can win the majority games out of a, out of a series against everyone. Yeah. It's, it's going to be tough. Especially but if, without Trevor Ariza or like Rodney Hood or whatever. Yeah. And if the Lakers can get Kyle Kuzma to finally be that solid third option, I think it's going to be over quicker than six games. Yeah. Because he's waiting to break out and be that true national third scorer. And he's proven to be when LeBron and AD aren't on the court. He's taken over as being the lead scorer, and he's done a pretty good job of doing that. Yeah. Like, there was one game earlier this year against Oklahoma City. He dropped, like, 35, and yeah. they rolled easily. So he he can be that third or second, you know, that third scorer. Mm-hmm. He just needs the ball. Yeah. I think it would be so funny, dude, if the Blazers made it to the um, Western Conference Finals and beat the Clippers. Yeah, that would like, be... That, that's definitely, like, the chances that happening is not right. But if, if Dame got, could literally wave to Pat Beverly and... Um, oh, yeah, that'd be hilarious. Paul and tell them to go home, that would be the best thing in the entire world. I just want to hear Dame just track on Paul George and Patrick Beverly. That's what I want to hear. He's, he's gonna... He better, <laughs> dude. He's 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 like he's he's a savage. But yeah, yeah. No, I no, I love That's, Damian Lillard, and I think he's great for the game of basketball. And he really saved that Portland franchise. Oh, hundred percent. Because they were looking for that next guy, you know, after Brandon Roy got hurt, and they yep. they traded Gerald Wallace to Charlotte for that sixth pick, which turned out to be Damian Lillard. Yeah, that's yeah. He is literally their savior. But I I really like that. So, um, just to like a few more things. So, like, mm-hmm. I want to, I, I want to hear your take on why you think Lamar is the number one quarterback in the league. Because he can do it all. Like, let's be honest. He's here. a tough. He's a tougher game plan, right? He he is because you have to be able to you know plan for the run. You have to be able to you know plan for the pass because. His that's biggest my, that's literally of, my thing is we saw what the Niners did to Patrick Mahomes in the Super Bowl. Contained him for the most part, right? And if it wasn't for not getting a even, few first downs here or there, we keep him off the field, and that's how that's basically how you beat the best quarterbacks like that. But Lamar Jackson, he's gonna he's almost a lock to get a hundred yards a game rushing on the ground, and he's gonna score his touchdowns. Like you see he's how, gonna get his, you just gotta limit to how much he gets. And you can actually, as much as people probably don't want to think this, you can limit Patrick Mahomes to what he can do if as oh. long as you play solid defense. And we literally if saw if you that. play your DBs back, you know, San Francisco doesn't really have the fastest defensive backs, and they played back a good chunk of the game and they got and they did a pretty decent job overall when, of not when getting beat. When 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 line when we're getting holding calls and holding when when our lines are not getting held, we're gonna get we would give got to Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, you know, and it's just it's one of those things, you know. But Lamar Jackson, you have to be able to sit here and say, okay, he can pass for three hundred yards a game, or he can run for two hundred. You know, what do we want to do? Do we want to <laughs> yeah? Have him run, What's going Do we want to run and pass? Yeah. That's why and he's him. the best. That's why he's the best quarterback. And he and the it, only one that can beat him is be, he beats himself. Yeah. 110%. You saw, it, you saw it in the Tennessee playoff game. Yeah, he, exactly. He did all right, mm-hmm. but he did not play like the MVP that we all expected and wanted him to be. Yeah, 110%. <laughs> yeah. But um, I, I personally, if I had to pick... If, the startage franchise is Lamar. Yeah, and I... And if I'm a defense preparing for him, I want him to pass the ball more than I do run. 100%. Because I don't want Lamar Jackson in open space one-on-one with anybody. I don't care who it is. And what makes it great is he doesn't have to. Yeah. He already has what he needs. Like, he's got... um, Good old line. Brown. Marquise Brown, he's got Willie Sneed, he's got Hayden Hurst. Yeah, but that's he's, all. He, you can just get a bunch of cheap tight ends, and he'll make them look good. Get guys that can block. And, get guys that can block that can help on a QB power or read option and help Mark. And Ingram. then Mark Ingram. And as long as yeah, you have exactly. a few guys that can stretch the field vertically, you, that's all you need. You don't need as long as you have a solid offensive line and a pretty decent run game. It's gonna be tough to stop him. You don't need yep, exactly. flash. You don't need flashy shit that spreads the field a bunch. No, you he's don't. Gonna make, he's going to make plays himself. Yeah, 
But, uh, man, that – and plus Baltimore's defense got better. They get – I mean, they got Calais Campbell from Jacksonville for a bag of chips. Yeah, I mean, exactly. He, just when you think, you know, they can't get better, they do. Yeah, but the team that got better the, – the best is the Niners. Yeah, everyone's mm-hmm. hating on them, and I'm not really quite sure why. DeForest <laughs> Buckner wanted – as much as we all loved him – Who's he hating? Wanted, on, like, who's hating on him? There, I've seen quite a few people who have given San Francisco on the, on the a, off-season decisions. Yes, they Dude, given him. A we literally C-rated. won. Sean McVay, as soon as he saw the draft and the Trent Williams trade, he was like, "I need a drink," because, like, <laughs> like they literally. Well, yeah. And DeForest Buckner, there was no way he's getting twenty-five million dollars. Not a chance. Um, and we so, signed Eric Armstead, who's solid. Eric Armstead, and we got a, you know, I think JB on Kinlaw is going to be really good. I oh, really yeah, do. Sure. You know, and you got an extra pick for trading down one spot to get him. I, although it broke my heart when San Francisco didn't draft CD Lamb, that broke my heart. Yeah. I love CD Lamb. I think, but I really like Sam Brandon Ayuk, yeah. and I trust what they, oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I definitely trust, you know, that, you know, front office or whatever. I was just disappointed because I saw in person how good CD Lamb was, and I was in shock. So, Yeah, the you know, Cowboys but, lucked out. Yeah, they did. And, you know, that off – now for Dallas, there's no excuse. There's no excuses. It's either you are good or you just choke. Dude, they, they have no reason to not be good. No, none. They have Jalen Smith, and then they have uh, – what's his face – uh, Van Der Esch on defense, and mm-hmm. they have they've got Dak, Mari Cooper, Michael Gallup, Zeke, CD Lamb, and Zeke. Zeke, you yeah, have there's no, no excuse for Dallas not to win that division. They have None. arguably one of the better linebacker cores in the league, and they like still that. have the best O line in football. Yeah, I couldn't so, name one of the guys, but yeah, they do. Well, there's Zach Martin, there's Travis Frederick, there's um, Tyron Smith. That's about it. But, you know, you have three of five guys that are at the best of their positions. So yep. that's <laughs> – There's no reason why you should suck. No, none. And if they do, then that, then that's just a complete choke job. Yep. Um. So, yeah. So to close it out, do you kind of want to give your – because I, I sent you a little bit ago uh-huh. a while back, like your top 22 guys. Do you want to mm-hmm. do that? Yeah, sure. All right. So, I mean, I mentioned it earlier, but Lamar Jackson will be my quarterback. 110%. Um, running back, that was a toss-up. But I I went ahead and said uh, Saquon. You Dude, know, I agree. Saquon's raw. He's so explosive. Yeah. He can he can pat, and I mean, he can catch. He can run. Like, what else do you need? And for my slot receiver, uh, I picked Tyreek Hill. He's got, you know, the speed. He's Obviously. got the hands. I mean, th- that was just a no-brainer for a slot receiver. Mm-hmm. You know, my my number one receiver was DeAndre Hopkins. I love DeAndre Hopkins. Yeah, yeah. He's so good at what he does. Yeah. The fact that Arizona got him for what they did just blows my mind. Um, <laughs> yeah, I know. They got him for uh, David Johnson. Uh, David Johnson. <laughs> That's like, wild. Come on. Come on. Yeah, yeah that but, is wild. My number two receiver, and this is probably going to put some people out of left field a little bit, but w- when you watch Debo Samuel, he will do it all. He can run it, He and he loves to block. You don't see very many receivers that want to block. That whole San Francisco receiving core bought into the process of, hey, if we run, we won't lose. Yep. Debo Samuel, arguably one of the best wide receivers in the game, probably the best rookie receiver in my opinion for whatever Mm -hmm. most dynamic what dude he literally lines up at running back he gets jet sweeps he blocks his ass off he gets he breaks the like he breaks all like so many tackles he's a load to take down and then he's not afraid to run inside like on a slant Uh he's not afraid and he also can throw the ball and we saw that i literally called it he he actually can sling the football and he we can use him for trick plays too. They use it yeah. in the Super Bowl and it just didn't work out. But I'm, he's like so dynamic. The only thing is, he might not have like breakaway speed, but you don't really need that if you're a bruiser like that. Yeah. And he fights I mean, for the football too. We saw that against the Ravens when he um yep. he cut he, he cut the DB off and then took it yeah. in the TD. Like and he's a he's a savage. 
I mean, and and that's what I you know want to see. J- just besides on you know, the catching and the stats, you got to look you know a little bit beyond that. You know, because if we're looking at stats, then it'd be Michael Thomas. But you know, I just want someone who's a little bit more physical than Michael Thomas. And I think Debo Samuel is going to be a top five receiver in about two years, maybe sooner. He just needs he's a different ball more. He is, and he's just slept on because he's only a rookie. Yep. I mean, in the tight end position, that's just not a even brainer. a brainer. Yeah, that's not even a. That's, it, I mean, it's George Kittle. I mean, he's, he's literally, he's my literally phone an offensive. Kid. He's a he's an offensive tackle that can play wide receiver. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's literally a, my phone case. Um, yeah. So, uh, left tackle, I'll go with um, Tyron Smith, left guard. You know, I didn't really spend a whole lot of time on the guards, you know, and stuff like that because that was a little bit tougher. But center would be Travis Frederick. Um, Right tackle would be Mike McClinchkey. And if I could, I'd – Okay, yeah. Wait, yeah. Trent Williams is a left tackle, right? Yeah, and I was I was just fired to say if I could, I'd slide either Tyron Smith or Trent Williams into left guard. Yeah, and then right guard, I'll go. Mike McGlinchey's solid. He doesn't get worked really. Yeah, no. Uh, and then on one D end, uh, I'll go ahead and take Nick Bosa. Um, I'll I'll say we're doing a four three defense. Um, so I would take DeForest Buckner. Mm-hmm. As one of my D tackles, I'll go ahead and take. Um, oh, honestly, I'll take. I'll take Calais Campbell as my other D tackle. And you take him over ahead. Aaron Donald, bro. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa! <laughs> I forgot about him. Sorry, Aaron Donald, <laughs> D tackle number yeah. two or one, whatever. My bad. No, I forgot please. he was a person. <laughs> um, or Fletcher Cox is so good. Yeah. There's a lot of guys. Cla- oh, what's his name? Uh, Chris Jones. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I have a hard time buying into that <laughs> hype. Fletcher, Fletcher Cox, though, is a savage. Yes, he is. And, but at my other end, I'm going to go ahead and put J.J. Watt. Yeah. Um, middle linebacker, I'm going to go Jalen Smith from Dallas. Left outside, I'll put Fred Warner. Um, right outside, probably Leighton Van Der Esch. Uh, at one corner, I'll take Marcus Peters. At, at the other one, I'll take Jalen Ramsey. Um, at strong safety, I'll take Jamal Adams. And at free safety, he flies under the radar so much, and it bugs me because he plays in our division. But Buda Baker is good, and Buda Baker no, is – Buda Baker is my favorite player to play with in Madden. He's so good. He's my favorite. That's actually hilarious how similar, like, I think of you. Like, I love yeah. Buda Baker, too. It's hilarious. That's so funny. It sucks he plays in our division, though. I will say that. Yeah, but George Kittle works him, though. It was. So- <laughs> I remember that. Yeah, on Halloween. That's, he's like, I'm yeah. so Buda. <laughs> but he was, George Kittle was playing hurt, though. He's a sad, yeah. but it's fine. But you know, I, I just hope that we get to see – you know, some NFL football this fall. Cause you know, it sucks. I'm yeah. not going to be able to go to OSU games or whatever else. Yeah, That's what I was saying. That that's actually another thing I was going to ask you. Do you think it's going to be like, do you think the season's sustainable? I, I do because at the end of the day, these players are professionals. And I, I watched the first episode of hard knocks uh, mm-hmm. with the Rams and the chargers. Yeah. The chargers didn't have any on that episode and the Rams had one, I think. Oh, case positive cases. Yeah, and so I think when we sit down and we tell these players, look, if you just can be a professional for at least 16, 17 weeks, we can have a football season and you can get your money yep. and not have to worry about that. Just yeah. stay at home, take care of yourself, and take care of the – you know, and do what's asked. If you do what's asked, you'll be fine, and this will be over before we know it. Exactly. That's all it is. It's just people I mean, that's honestly what you got to ask from a lot of people. Yeah, I was just going to say, you know, as a country and, a, you know, as a world, if we just did what was asked, you know, but it just bugs me that people are, you know, sitting here saying, well, this country treated it as a joke. We did. If you would have looked at TikTok in like March, beginning of March. Yeah. Like that was just awful yep. to see, you know, like all these jokes about it. I'm just like, yeah. it's not just one or two people making yeah. a joke about it. The whole country did. Yeah. Because we didn't know about it. Yep. So, but now that we know about it, we just got to go out there and do our job as Americans 
and make sure this thing's over so we can have our lives back to normal. It's pretty simple math. 100%. Yeah, well so, said. Thank you. This was fun. No problem. Yeah, I think that's a very good closing statement. Awesome. Yeah, hey, thanks for having me on, Kel. It was a yeah. blast. We, we should do know. this again. This oh, is fun. Especially when the NFL man. season, especially when the NFL season starts again. And then actually we can also when we'll, we'll see if your predictions come to life, the, either the Blazers and Lakers or Blazers or Lakers and Clips or whatever. Yeah, you know, I I'm excited for this next couple of weeks of sports, you know. Yeah. But it'll be interesting. And uh, yeah, thanks for having me on again, man. It was a blast. Yeah. Thank you so much. All right. Have a good night. You too, Cal. Bye bye.